Uniprint's third-party charging so that you can implement cost centers or departments into your Uniprint print management solution. So the steps involved here, I'm going to go over uh, how to get your users and departments into the Uniprint system via imports, uh, what the system looks like as you use it on some of our multifunction machines that are Pharos embedded, and then finally, what the data looks like as it comes out. And this is going to be a quick recording, only a few minutes. And um, if you have any questions, please send those in to, to uh, optimization at ferros.com. So the first thing that you need to do is get users into the system. And a user import is going to look like this. It is a comma-separated um, import file. We also can import from Active Directory uh, for your users. There are some samples here as well. For instance, John Smith. And this is a complete import file or import line for an import file. And there are two methods of implementing any kind of personal funds that the user may have. Uh, this method or the credit method. So you can use either of those. And this is shown here as well. So here's a credit zero. And here's a pursing uh, set to zero. And then here's sor sort of a more minimalistic import uh, of just the minimum details that you need for the import. You can bring this out of any system that you may have, like Banner or PeopleSoft, and uh, bring them into your Uniprint system. You can also automate that to happen using the Microsoft Scheduler service. There's also a help topic on this for bringing users into the system, batch load technical information in the Ferris Uniprint help. And again, it shows the same sort of information. It shows what each of these fields uh, means and what the requirements are. And then it also shows how you could batch load that um, by automating it uh, in your system as well. The second thing that we need to do is import the department information. And that is done via the third-party charging area in the Ferris Uniprint Administrator. What you do is you set up an import profile. That import profile contains two components, and they could be done together or individually. The first is the import of the cost centers on their own, so the departments themselves, getting a list of the departments and their department names. So you can set the configurable items that you want in the department import, as well as the location for that file, the delimiters, and all of those kinds of uh, feature aspects. I'll show you a sample of what one of those looks like. The most typical looks like this here. At the top, you see um, department, or whatever you're calling your uh, categorization of users in departments, whether that's cost centers, department, department, FOPOLs, um, charge number, whatever you want to call that in your environment organization. Then it is the account number or account name of that department, and then optionally a description as well. And so those can look uh, with numbers. They could be FOPL, which is like a few numbers, dash, a few numbers, dash, um, and the description is optional. Some put both the account number and description in both fields, uh, and you can see how that plays out on the multifunction devices uh, or Ferris pop-ups that you'll be using. And we can share any of this information with you guys as well. There's also information, again, in the Ferris Help that talks about import profiles. So if I search here, I can see all the information about how to add an import profile and how to go through it, what each of the functions is, and, and how to get my cost centers and or cost center constraints into the system. Talking about cost center constraints, that is the third piece that is needed. So in order to do a proper import, you need the users imported, you need the cost centers imported, and then you need a file that combines the two of them to say that this user, for instance, M. Decker, is a member of department 1111. And you can see later in my file, I also have M. Decker as 2222 but he's not listed on three or four. So when Mr. Decker goes to a device, 
uh, he will only see departments one and two um, for his account. Now I'll very quickly show you what it looks like on some of the devices. So users will walk up to any of our multifunction devices that, um, that are supported by Pharos and you can see which models are supported by Pharos in the Pharos community under downloads and IMFP supported models. Um, represented here are most of the manufacturers that we support. And what I just wanted to flip through was what it looks like on each manufacturer that, uh, that are most common for our cost center workflow. So once the user has logged on, they would then see the cost center selection. And it looks like this on a Canon. It looks like this on an HP. It looks like this on a Konica Minolta. Like this on a Rico. And finally, like this on a Xerox multifunction device. So in the Ferris administrator, right next to the import profiles where you brought the data into the system is export profiles. And you can create an export profile here by inserting it. And then you can set all of the criteria that you'd like for that export profile, like its location and specifically what items you would like to be exported into the file. The file that comes out of the system will be a comma separated file. Like this one here is the most typical or simplistic, uh, which is the department or FOPL or cost center. Again, whatever you've named it in your environment. The account number or account name in your environment. The activity that has occurred, whether that be print, copy, or scan and then the amount that has occurred in that period. Uh, most organizations are doing a monthly export and then they reset the counters each month. Um, I also have organizations that are doing that on a semester by semester basis. Uh, down here we see another export profile that has a whole lot more information in it. So I ran it again with all of the criteria. And so again you'll see the department, the account number, the activity, the amount, and then the next ones are the pages, the sheets, the jobs, whether or not it's a grant, um, the limit on that grant, and um, if limits have been set for the grant. And all of this, again, is available in the Pharos admin. You can see this information here. You can select the items that you want. And there's also help information available as well if you were to search or index export profiles. And here's all the export profile information. In addition, it can be done automatically using the Microsoft Scheduler service uh, by using the command line CC export and then the name of your export profile. Lastly, the thing that customers want to look at is if they're not looking to export into an external system, they want to see what does a report look like. Uh, and this is just a typical report of uh, the department list, the activity, copy or print, and then the amount and job and print. And so this is probably the most typical report, though in Ferris reports, there are a number of reports that you can use to get the data out of your system. This is, not, this is what is used more for referential purposes or for proof to a department if they complain about your export, because normally you'd just be dealing with a simple export like this, and bringing that data back into your PeopleSoft or Banner or whatever system you have uh, for managing your back-end resources. That is it on third-party charging. Thank you for listening.